Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Our eternal, most loving Father, the maker of all, the ruler of all, the Lord who has no beginning and no end. You alone are God in heaven and on earth. We worship you and adore you. We pray that your word will come afresh to our hearts so that the corners of our hearts will once again be illuminated and that we continue to love you and serve you as the one and only God of our lives. May we never run after other gods. May we never forsake the Lord. May we never abandon you, the fountain of life. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our theme for today is do not abandon the Lord. Do not abandon the Lord. And our passage is found in Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. In chapter 2 of Jeremiah's prophecy, he gave at least nine little word pictures to help us understand what it was like when Judah forsook the Lord. Three of the nine pictures are seen in this pericope of verses 1 to 13. The picture of an adulterous woman, the picture of a nation which has changed its God, the picture of a broken cistern. And behind this incredible idea that God's relationship with his people is like a marriage, there's no other image which could better communicate to all the tender love God has for his people. And let's go into God's words as we study uh, from verse 1 of chapter 2 of Jeremiah's prophecy. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land not sown, Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruit of his increase. All that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me? I have followed idols, and I have become idolaters. Neither did they say, Where is the Lord, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of desert and pits, through a land of droughts and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed and where no one dwelled. I brought you into a bountiful country, to eat his fruit and his goodness. But when you enter, you defile my land and make my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handled the law did not know me. The ruler also transgressed against me. The prophet prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Therefore, I will yet bring charges against you says the Lord, and against your children, children, I will bring charges. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus and see, see to Keda, and consider diligently, and see if there be. It has been such a thing. As a nation change is God, which are not gods, but my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. Be astonished. O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord, 
For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and end themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. This is the word of the Lord. The incredible idea of the nation of Judah forsaking God is laid before us for our meditation, for us to put in mind what they did and never repeat after them. In Jeremiah 2 verse 5 says, What injustice have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me, have followed idols and become idolaters? In this verse, the Lord is saying, what have I done wrong? He's a, pers a person of sinful human nature, that when we turn our back on God, God gets all the blame. We want to blame God for the reasons why we turned from him. However, the marriage broke down. It's, a, it's an account of the faithless adultery of the people, and God is well within his right to sue the nation of Judah for divorce. We have the image of God saying, I married Israel. In another sense, he said, Israel, my firstborn. That's to say that there was an intimate relationship between God and the people of Israel, especially Judah. And in Ephesians 5, Paul was giving us the imagery of the marriage between Christ and his church. Marriage between a man and a woman reflects his relationship and thus bringing about the glory of God. People who have forsaken the Lord are like a woman who has forsaken her husband who truly loves her. And what did they do? They were running after the gods of other nations, like the Canaanite gods of Baal and Nashera. The second picture in this passage is a nation which has changed its God. And God was asking that the other nations change their gods. Jeremiah 2, verses 10 to 12. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus, and see, send to Keda, and consider diligently, and see if there has been such a thing as a nation change its gods, which are not gods, for my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. According to this passage, the people of Judah really have changed. They have deviated from the worship of the true God to worship the gods of the nations surrounding them. And with this, they were even blaming God for their turning from him. Paul in Romans 1.22 says, Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men, and birds, and animals, and reptiles. And if you look at the gods they were worshipping, according to Psalm 114, from verse 4 to 13, they are hired us as liver and gold, the work of men's hand. They have mouth, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throats. Those who make them are like them. So it's everyone who trusts in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. 
He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. To enjoy the glory of God for worship of dumb idols, of wood and stones, which could not see or hear, is like confusing the light of the sun with the reflected light of the moon. Because the moon takes its light from the sun. It is to reduce the glory of God to created things, and this is purely idolatry. The top picture is a picture of a broken cistern in Jeremiah 2.13. For my people have committed two evils, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. Broken cisterns that hold no water the gods of other land they worship that will never, never profit them. Not only did they turn against God, but even the three primary classes of leaders established by God turned against him. The priests, the first class, we are to expand the law, but they were silent and consented to people's evil. They did not know God, so their lives were not different. The second group of people, the leaders or rulers, the civil leaders, their duty was to lead the people in the way of the Lord, yet they themselves transgress the way. And the third group, the prophets, we are to reclaim the people from idolatry, yet they encourage the people by pretending to have been oracles from bars and other worthless idols. Jeremiah used this example of a courtroom scene to focus on the seriousness of their sin, like as if God was charging them to court. Judah had committed two grievous sins. First was that of omission, and omission shall forsaken a God. And the second, that of commission, she has replaced our true God with false gods, according to verse 13. In this our meditation, one of today's biggest idols is greed for material things and money. We confuse the giver with a gift, and there is grace for material things and for money in our system today. Major prophecy today is the prophecy of prosperity. For the preachers of prosperities, how faithful are we to the Lord who appointed us to that office as people of God, as priests of God, as prophets of God, as messengers of God, as oracles of God. According to Psalm 16, verses 4 and 5, Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my Lord. Most times, when God blesses a person, he forgets about him and runs after mundane things of this world. When we are blessed, we tend to forget the Lord. Israel was guarded jealously out of Egypt through the wilderness and settled in the land that did not belong to them in the first instance, the land of Canaan, the land full of milk and honey. But in their prosperity and in their affluence, they forsook the Lord. In different periods of our lives, we have been tempted to seek security through possessions, through people, or through our own abilities. There's no sure security apart from God. Money cannot secure us. Possessions cannot secure us. They are ephemeral. 
We see them one time and they flew and they flew away. Our youth and nation set before them today greed and craze for materialism instead of hard work that God will bless. Our society is so corrupt to the extent that the fear of God is diminishing almost every day. Let us together have a rebirth, a rethink. Let us come back to God, the source of our lives. If we do not, one day, so soon, we will stand before him to give account of our lives. And who can withstand his presence that time? May it never be too late. May our nation never miss it. May we return to the God of our life. May we serve him in truth, in simplicity, and in holiness. May he be our Lord to death, even as we pray in Jesus' name. May the Lord continue to multiply the power of his word in our hearts so that we grow in grace and never return to the worship of mundane things and other gods. We will serve him through all our life, who is our Lord, Master, Maker, Redeemer, our friend. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com. Thank you.